Zuko here, and it is time for my November reading wrap-up. I don't know if you can see all of these. These are all of the books that I've read in the month of November. So, there are a lot of them. I think there are 26. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? I don't know why I make this decision every month. Ugh. first book I read this month was Untamed by Glennon Doyle. My friend gave me this book for Christmas and or my birthday this year, so I wanted to read it when I had the chance and my library got it in. And I love listening to autobiographical books when they are narrated by the author. So I listened to this. This is a autobiographical book by Glennon Doyle about her kind of reclaiming her life from what she thought society was telling her to be. She like left her husband, married a woman who is the love of her life, like just her making her own decisions finally instead of doing what she was expected to do. Um, I really enjoyed this and I gave it a four out of five stars. The second book I read this month was The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. and this was a reread for me. This was the only book in the Heroes of Olympus series that I actually read when it came out. I think this cover has the like prettiest color scheme also just for the record. I still enjoyed this book so I gave this a four to five stars. I find that I was enjoying this book more than I enjoyed the original series because it felt more grown up even if it wasn't completely like they're still teenagers but they're not 12 so I enjoyed reading this book and I'm glad that I did. Oh no okay let's keep going. Ah, oh no oh no book I read this month was The Alex Crow by Andrew Smith. This is a weird book. So this is a book, if I can explain it from what my memory gives me, about a refugee kid who was adopted into this family in the US and he and his adopted brother are sent to this summer camp that is very strange um, because their parents work for this weird tech company that does weird things. I don't I don't know how to even explain this book. I don't know. I can't explain this book. You're just gonna have to go into it. I gave this book a four to five stars. Like I enjoyed it. I can't explain it. Um what's the what's the back say? Okay, the back says here's a handful of dirt. Here is nothing but ice. Here is Joseph Stalin telling the melting man what to do. Here's the family pet, a crow we call Alex. Here is an immigrant kid, the second son named Ariel, who lives in a place called Sunday. Skillfully blending multiple story strands that transcend time and space, award-winning grasshopper jungle author Andrew Smith chronicles the story of Ariel, a refugee who is the sole survivor of an attack on his small village, now living with an adoptive family in Sunday, West Virginia. Ariel's story is a juxtaposed against that of a schizophrenic bomber and the diaries of a failed Arctic expedition from the late 19th century and a depressed bionic reincarnated crow. I didn't even remember the Arctic part of this. <laughs> so yeah, that's this book. Four out of five stars. I enjoyed it. It was weird. Maybe like a high 3.5. Either way. Then the fourth book I read this month was Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. and this is the second book in the Heroes of Olympus series. This is the first time I read this book. I enjoyed it. I don't really remember what this one's about because I read them all in like such quick succession that they all started to kind of blur together but I know I did enjoy this and I gave it four to five stars. Then I read The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is a novel in verse chronicling the stories of a queer black boy being raised in London and his experiences in like college and in the drag scene. I enjoyed this book. I don't love novels in verse but like I, I liked the core story of this and like the, the heart of it. So I gave this book four to five stars. It was really, it was just nice, you know? It was powerful. And also, it's like got such a pretty cover under the dust jacket with all the flamingos. Very pretty, nice book. Next, I read Salt, so Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. This is a short story collection of like kind of um, absurd, short stories like from things like the whole world being flooded and people being praying mantises it was a really first of all it's a beautiful book like the cover is so pretty it's a really weird book i'm not a huge fan of short story collections but like i really did like the like ambiance of these stories i guess 
So I gave this a three out of five stars, which is pretty good for a short story collection that I don't really love. It's not my favorite way to get stories. Then I read Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. This is a book about a girl whose face gets shot off and she had spent her whole life being beautiful and now she has this big facial deformity and she meets this woman named Brandy and she like goes on the like run I guess with her to steal prescription drugs and be wild. Um, this was a really interesting read. I'm not sure if this is a problematic book or not. I, I don't know. I'm not the one to speak on this. This has a lot of like transgender rep in this but it was written by like a cisgender dude in like I think the 90s or early 2000s so I don't know if this was offensive but this was an interesting book and I enjoyed it well enough I gave this three to five stars. Next I read Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. This is a book about a boy who wakes up one day knowing that he's going to kill his best friend and then himself. Trigger warnings in this book for suicide, bad mental health, and sexual assault. I enjoyed this book. I thought it was interesting. I don't have like too much to say about it because it's it was a contemporary like I don't know I enjoyed this book but I don't really have a lot to say about it so I gave this three out of five stars. Then I read or rather tried to read Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. This was an awful book. This was just terrible. It has like no world building but it's fantasy but it's an urban fantasy set in New York like every urban fantasy is I feel like. <laughs> this was awful. The writing is bad. I don't like Adam Silvera's writing. Um, he tends to add like he'll give one character like one or two slang words that they just use constantly but it never feels natural and it's always like out of place. Uh, I finished I gave up at like 46% I was like I can't do this this is truly just awful. <laughs> the cover is really pretty and as a queer person who loves queer representation this book felt like pandering which is so weird I don't know how like everything just felt so unnatural and forced like all of the representation in this which is so weird. I've never experienced that before where I felt like it was pandering because it's never pandering. But this book did representation so forcefully, I guess, in a way that I've never experienced before where it was just bad. I hated this book. If I could give this lower than a one star, I would have. Then I read The Mark of Athena. This is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series. <laughs> I just blanked there really bad. This might have been like my least favorite of this series. I felt like this was the slowest book and the one I like was the least interested in. I gave this book a three out of five stars. And I read Grace's Guide, The Art of Pretending to be a Grown-Up by Grace Helbig. This came out in like 2014 and it really shows. Like I used to really like Grace and I used to watch her content. I fell off of her content in YouTube and her podcast. The podcast because I think it was bought by full screen and the uh, format changed but everything else just because like I just don't watch a lot of YouTube anymore. This book really feels like a 30 year old trying to write for young adults in like the early 2010s, you know? It just felt like it was trying really hard to be quirky and fun and I didn't love it. Yeah, I gave, I gave this two out of five stars. It just kept falling flat for me in a lot of ways where it was like really trying too hard and not hitting the mark. Then I read Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. My review for this book on Goodreads is just it was so boring because it was so bo it was so train of thought writing where nothing was happening and I didn't care. It felt really pretentious and just unappealing and I didn't like it. <laughs> I gave this two out of five stars. This is based on the movie or this is what the movie Annihilation is based on. I also didn't like the movie. I hoped I'd like the book more. I absolutely did not like the book more. Then I read House of Hades by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Heroes of the Olympus Heroes of Olympus series. Uh, this book was I can't tell you what this book is about because like it's the fourth book in a series but I enjoyed this book more than the last one and I gave this a four out of five stars. Then I finished off this series by reading Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. This is the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series. This was maybe not as good of a of a last battle as I would have liked. I feel like I blinked and missed a really big scene happening. Like something really, the whole battle felt like it took place in like half of an hour of the audiobook and that felt really fast and I missed a bunch of stuff because I like wasn't paying attention for a second. 
But I, I did like this book. I thought it was a pretty good conclusion, aside from the fact that the battle concluded really fast. It did give this four out of five stars. So yeah. Then I read Witchwood by Tahira Mafi. This is the sequel to Furthermore. This is set in another one of these like interesting little worlds that Tahara Mafi had built in this series, this duology. Um, this follows a girl named Layla who is in charge of washing the dead and sending them on to the afterlife. This was a really awesome book. It had like darker elements than I was expecting from a middle grade and I loved it. Um, this was super fun. I really like like death themed death inspired content so this was like super for me and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four to five stars but it's like a high four to five stars. And I read We Are the Wildcats by Siobhan Vivian. This is a contemporary book about a field hockey team and a really manipulative coach. This book has a really beautiful cover. I don't want to talk about it a lot because Siobhan Vivian was like a dick to a young woman on Twitter for no reason. I don't want to support her. I bought this before knowing that happened. Uh, so I gave this one star because I don't believe in the actions of the author. This could have been like a three star book, but the author just really turned me off of wanting to enjoy her work or support her. Remember kids, your actions can impact your career. Then I read And I Darken by Kirsten White. This is a female, I guess, Vlad the Impaler reimagining. Um, it is historical fiction. I don't love historical fiction. I find all of the politics and stuff of historical fiction really dull and boring. Um, like this was set in Turkey and like countries that I don't normally like read books set in and so that was kind of neat to see like other cultures even if it was set in like the 1400s but it just wasn't for me because I don't really love historical fiction and that's on me. It also like wasn't as dark and brutal as I was hoping it was gonna be. I give this three to five stars. Then I read Internment by Samira Ahmed this book had a really good premise. It set like 15 minutes in the US's future where they've banned Muslims and are sending them to internment camps. But the execution was very poor. It was mostly about this this girl who is sent to one of these internment camps and just misses her boyfriend a whole lot. She only has a boyfriend in the outside world. Like it doesn't seem like she has any other friends. She makes more friends in the internment camp than she seemed to have out of it which is like weird. Then she like has a weird romance thing kind of with a guard in the internment camp. It's just really romance focused and like ridiculous instead of like good. Also there's a scene with an electric fence that like kills somebody and that's not what electric fences are for uh, and that really bothered me. Just it was a really good concept and a really poor execution. I only give this book two out of five stars. I wished that it was better and not so like weird romance based. Like she thinks about her boyfriend and how she wants to talk to her boyfriend and how her boyfriend is the most important thing ever the whole time. Also her boyfriend's family is Jewish and they're like not against the internment camps and that feels really in poor taste to me. So yeah. I read The Deep by Rivers Solomon. This is a book about um, the children that were born of enslaved African people as they were sent, like pushed off of the ships that were stealing them from their home country to America to be slaves. Um, and these, these children who were born in the ocean uh, have become like merfolk. This was a super interesting, cool book with like possible queer rep? I don't know. I don't think that the merfolk actually have like assigned genders at all. So that's cool too. I don't know. This was just a really neat novella that I really enjoyed and I recommend it to everybody because it's very short but it's very interesting and like thought provoking. Then I read The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab. Um, this is their first novel. I listened to the audiobook of this. I listened to the audiobook of most things so like I'm not like a super fast reader um, where I read like 26 books in a month. I did listen to most of them but this book the audiobook narrator had literally no emotion like their way of speaking was so stilted that like commas felt like periods. It was very unappealing and the book was boring. Like the main character didn't have feelings or emotions and she meets 
this man the day that children start to go missing and she immediately goes no it can't be him because well she doesn't give a reason but i i guess it's implied that it's because she likes him like she has feelings for him but their romance is like really the most bland romance i've ever experienced in my life because she doesn't have feelings it's just so weird there's like one character who like kind of has personality but his personality is like misogyny and i don't think that's actually a personality but he's the only one with any semblance of a personality this was not good i really wanted to like that it says for neil gaiman fans absolutely not if you like good writing you're not gonna like this i guess apparently the like writing was lyrical and stuff i don't know the audiobook narrator was so bland that i couldn't like notice that uh so yeah i gave this a two out of five stars only because i liked the concept but i hated the execution because this wasn't a good book i'm really hoping i like victoria schwab's other stuff this is the second book of hers i read the other one was the city of bones i think um one of the middle grade series she just started but i haven't read like any of the other stuff so i'm hoping i like the rest of her work and i hope none of it is like this because this is awful next i read slay by Brittany morris this is a book about a girl whose big secret is that she is the creator developer whatever of this whole video game that is all about like black power which is awesome um this book is really fun and interesting and I don't know I really liked this book I thought this was a really good read but it's probably not something that I would reread just because I don't reread contemporaries but I did enjoy this book I thought it was just like a good story that shows a life that I don't live and also like hell yeah to girls who code but also super hell yeah to black girls who code so yeah I gave this a three to five stars but like a three to five it's like a high three then I read The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This is a book in a world in which everyone has been like cursed to kind of be gray and drab and these these girls are born all the time who have the ability to make people beautiful and this whole society is based on being beautiful and how the rich are beautiful and this follows one of the girls, the Bells, who make people beautiful, who becomes uh, the favorite, which is the Bell who works for the royal family. Um, I honestly thought this was a really fun book. I wouldn't say this was like a really great book. It was a pretty like predictable book, but it was very fun and like a quick read because it was interesting the whole time. I don't know if I'll continue on with the series. I've heard the sequel was not good but maybe I will if I listen to the audiobook. I don't know. I gave this three out of five stars. Like, it was fun. And I recommend it if you just want, like, candy for your brain. If you want a book that's not going to make you think really hard. Then I read Proxy by Alex London. This is a dystopian, but, like, it's a queer dystopian, which never happens. The main character is queer and also a person of color. This is a book in which there is, like, a really big class divide to which the rich people almost like they own people who are poor uh and anytime a rich person commits a crime the poor person is punished for it and they have to like take the rich person's debts for x amount of years and this is about one of the proxies who are the people who take the punishments for the rich people i honestly thought this book was pretty fun um i liked that it was queer because you never see queer dystopian this was something the dystopian craze needed more of I don't think we need more dystopians right now though but i really like thought this was fun and i gave this a 3.5 at one point in here i did uh try to read the creeps by john Connolly, and i just wasn't vibing with it like this is a short book and i couldn't focus on it anymore like i just didn't care so i did dnf this that's why i forgot to mention it um but yeah this is about a boy and his wiener dog who live on a street where the gates of hell have been opened in their neighbor's basement that's all i really like i made it a good like halfway through this book and I just didn't care enough which kind of sucks I guess and I read they both die at the end by Adam Silvera so this book follows two boys who get the call that morning or that midnight I guess where they are going to die that day it is a thing called death cast and it phones you to tell you the day you're gonna die again my same complaint with the other book is that this has a lot of slang in it like one of the characters says mad all the time they're like mad this and mad that oh like this is legit this and i'm like it just felt really weird and stilted it was always really glaring and it shouldn't be like 
it should have been naturally in the writing and it just wasn't. And I really couldn't tell the main characters voices from each other. Like, it was just like a miss there where everyone's voice kind of sounded the same until you heard the mad this or the legit that. I also felt like the relationship in this book was exactly the same as the relationship in so or in What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli, except that in that book Arthur was unbearably annoying and in this book the nerdy character was not unbearably annoying. Like they both have the stoic queer man who's poor and just got out of a relationship and the nerdy boy who's really mentally ill and like doesn't ever have experience with the relationship. It's the same dynamic in both except this one had less unbearable characters because Arthur was weird and their relationship in that book made no sense. This book at least like their relationship did feel like it had chemistry. One of the like irritating things was that every couple chapters there would be like a chapter from somebody else's perspective of like nothing. It didn't need to be there. It felt like it was trying to like pad the book out. Like there were a lot from like the death cast callers and stuff and it just didn't, it felt like unnecessary padding to make the book longer. And this book didn't have any world building again. Like there's no explanation for how death cast started or why. Everyone has at least one dead parent or dying parent or like it's weird. Like I don't know why having the day you're gonna be killed or the day you die phoned and told to you means that everybody's dead but like one character was an orphan whose mom dad and sister died one character's mom was dead and dad was in a coma one character's husband died like everyone's people were dead which was really weird because just because you know the day you're gonna die doesn't mean suddenly everyone's dying more that's not how that works <laughs> So yeah, I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars because I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it a lot. It was a low 3 out of 5 stars. <laughs> and lastly, I read Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. Trigger warnings in this book for bullying, gore, violence, rape, suicide. A lot of just vulgar language. <laughs> and a lot of sex scenes, I guess, but like not... No, explicit. It was explicit. I hated this book. This was an awful book where the word sperm or semen or horny or shit was used like every page. It was unnecessary. This book didn't use contractions in its language. So everyone talked really just still did and weird. I don't know. I hated this book. And it was hard to read. Like there was one female character in it really. And she was just there to complain about things, which was great. I loved that. And there were a lot of repeated phrases like he'd be like and that was our day and that's the truth and it just felt really icky I didn't I didn't like this book the phrase piss and insect semen was used I think that should be enough to deter you from reading this book I hated it it was awful one out of five stars I I'm so sad because it's such a pretty color but it's such an awful book so yeah uh, so yeah that was my reading month there were a lot of books I really hated this month I think that kind of sucks, but at least it means I get them off my shelf. So that's great because it makes room for books that I want to read. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. That was my reading wrap up for the month and I will see you whenever I do my next video. That should be the books I want to read before the end of the year. That'll be out on Thursday. So yeah, I'll see you whenever I do my next video.